Welcome to lecture 11 of experimental vibration analysis. In this lecture, we discuss multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO, FRF estimation. This is used when more than one shaker is attached to a structure. The content of this video is found in chapter 14 of the book, Noise and Vibration Analysis. There are several important advantages with using several shakers when exciting a structure. First, it allows for better energy distribution, since several shakers can be distributed around the structure and the excitation level of each shaker can be smaller. Second, it can be easier to excite all the modes of the structure, since shakers can be used in different directions. It's easier to avoid node lines, since it's enough for modal analysis that one shaker is exciting each mode. More than one shaker position is also necessary when the structure has more than one mode at a particular frequency, although it's not necessary to measure them simultaneously, but it's usually better. And then, finally, I find it useful that with two or more shakers, it's possible to monitor the reciprocity, which ensures that all shakers are connected properly to the structure. We need to discuss what is meant by a MIMO system. It's a system with a number of inputs and a number of outputs. And between each input and all the outputs, there are linear systems summing up at each output. Thus, each output is created as a sum of each input through a linear uh, system. This means that from a signal processing point of view, each output can be, be viewed as a separate MIMO system, multiple input, single output. In the picture here, an H1 type system where noise is added to the output is shown. Before going on to discuss how to estimate MIMO frequency response functions, we need to define some multi-channel spectra. Typically, when we have several input signals and several output signals, we stack them in column vectors x and y as shown here. Since it's frequency analysis we're going to use for MIMO FRF estimation, we show the vectors in the frequency domain here. It's important to note that the spectra x sub 1, x sub 2, etc. shown here are single block DFTs. So they stand for the DFT of a single time block of input signal x sub 1, x sub 2, etc. Using the input and output vectors, x and y, we can define the input cross-spectral matrix, gxx, as the expected value of x times the Hermitian transpose of x. The Hermitian transpose of x means the complex conjugate of the column vector x transposed. Thus, after the expected value operation, or averaging several blocks of spectra, we obtain gxx as g sub 1 1, g sub 1 2, etc. as shown here. That is, on the diagonal, gxx contains the power spectral densities of each input channel. And on the off diagonal, it contains the cross spectra of the corresponding pairs of input signals. We can also define the input-output cross-spectral matrix G, Y, X between the inputs X and the outputs Y. Each row of this matrix contains the cross-spectral densities between a single output and all the inputs. We'll now discuss the simplest MISO system, the two-in, Y-and-out system. Note that whatever relations we find for this system, will be general for all larger systems with more inputs. For the two in one out system, we have two inputs, x1 and x2, and two linear systems, hy1 and hy2. These result in the signals u1 and u2, which then sum to form the signal u, which finally sums with the extraneous noise n to form the output signal y. 
This is that an H1 type system, since the only noise we have, extraneous noise we have, is on the output. To find the H1 estimator for this 2 in 1 out system, we start by the equation for the output Y and set it up in matrix form. Thus, Y equals the row matrix HY1, HY2 times the column vector X1, X2 plus the noise n. We can formulate this more generally by letting y equal the matrix x, h, the matrix h of the frequency response functions times x, the input spectrum vector, plus the noise n. Next, we multiply the equation by x Hermitian transpose from the right, an average as in this equation. After averaging, we thus find that gyx equals h times gxx plus the cross spectrum gnx, which approaches zero, of course, uh, since x and n are uncorrelated. Solving for h, we then find the h1 MISO estimator, h hat equal to g hat sub yx times the inverse of g hat sub xx. Now, as soon as you see a matrix inverse, you should be cautious. Under what circumstances can we actually compute that inverse? First of all, the number of averages used to compute the input cross spectral matrix g xx has to be at least as many as the number of inputs Otherwise, the matrix does not have full rank. Furthermore, each spectrum vector has to be independent, that is, uncorrelated. This means that we have to use excitation signals that fulfill this criterion. Now, having uncorrelated forces or inputs is not trivial. The forces can get correlated even if the voltages sent to the shaker amplifiers are uncorrelated, due to the fact that the shakers are not strong enough to force the structure according to the voltages sent to the shakers. This is particularly difficult at the resonances of the structure, where the structure is kind of prone to vibration according to its modes. Thus, the correlation between the forces must always be checked when using multiple inputs. We formulated the H1 estimator only for a single output, but it's easy to show that if we have n sub i inputs and n sub o outputs, by adding one row for each output, the general MIMO H1 estimator is equal to the matrix H hat, which is n sub O by n sub i, and this frequency response function matrix equals g hat sub yx, which is n o by n i times, and times the inverse of g hat xx, which is the number of inputs by the number of inputs. The you should also remember that the general formulation of the FRF matrix is that H times X equals Y, where X is the input and Y is the output, of course. The H2 estimator can easily be shown only to exist if the number of inputs equals the number of outputs, which is not often the case. So instead, we define another estimator called the HV estimator, which is of larger interest. HV minimizes the total error. So for noise on both the input and output, the, HP, the H1 estimator can be seen as in the left plot here to minimize the vertical distances as seen in the left plot here. The HV estimator, on the other hand, minimizes the distances perpendicular to the line. 
The method to formulate the HV estimator is to define an error vector as the difference between the output vector y and h times x. We call this vector n here. This error vector contains all extraneous noise, and you should not confuse it by the output noise for which we previously also used the, the letter n. Next, we formulate the cross spectral matrix G sub nn, which can be formulated as is seen in the last equation here. By some advanced linear algebra, the solution that minimizes the trace of G sub nn can be shown to be fine, found by taking the smallest eigenvalue of the eigenvalue decomposition of GNN. It should be mentioned, although, that although the HV estimator has, of course, always a solution, the estimate is only optimal if the noises on the input and output are balanced at every frequency. This is, of course, rarely the case, so the HV estimator is not particularly justifiable at least not at the resonances where we are most interested to have good estimates. Therefore, the measurement noise has to be kept to a minimum, particularly the input noise, and I recommend you to actually use the H1 estimator. Ordinary coherences are not very useful for MIMO systems, since they all are less than one. To assess the quality of MIMO FRF estimates, we can instead define the multiple coherence, denoted gamma squared sub y colon x, where the colon should be re re read given, as in statistics. From the figure here, the multiple coherence is defined as the ratio of the coherent output spectrum g u u and the output g y y. This is similar to the single input, single output case. To find how to compute the multiple coherence, we set the equations up. First, the output spectrum u equals h times x. Then remember that a product a, is a times b transposed, when it's a matter of matrices, equals b transposed, a transposed. So the spectrum GUU is equal to the expected value of U times the Hermitian transpose of U, which is then the expected value of H times X times Hermitian transpose of X times Hermitian transpose of H. Thus, GUU equals HGXX times H Hermitian after averaging. Finally, the multiple coherence then is, with hats and all variables here indicating they're all estimates, gamma squared y colon x equals h times gxx times h Hermitian transpose divided by gyy. To find suitable excitation signals for MIMO estimation, we have to consider the fact that gxx has to be invertible. True random thus works, although it's not a good choice as it requires very long block size. Burst random also works fine with uncorrelated random sequences on each channel. Lastly, periodic random is a new special form of pseudorandom for multiple input applications. And since this is the best excitation signal, we will present that next. So periodic random is a special form of pseudorandom and is generated as we'll describe here. First, you generate a random block for each force channel. Then these blocks are all sent out to the shakers and repeated periodically. After, say, 5 to 20 blocks, the when the structure's response reaches steady-state conditions, and the structure thus responds in a periodic manner, 
one block is acquired of all the signals, that is, all the inputs and outputs. And DFTs are computed and put in the vectors x, m, and y, m, the intermediate average vectors. And then they're accumulated into the spectrum matrices g, y, x, and g, x, x, and a vector g, y, y, and a vector for the outputs only because we don't need the cross spectra between the outputs. Next, step one to three are repeated a number of times. And after enough averages, say 10 to 30, to get rid of the extraneous noise, the process is stopped and the FRF matrix is computed by the estimator, for example, the H1 estimator, using the accumulated spectra and the multiple coherence is computed for each output. Finally, I will just mention the possibility to estimate MIMO FRFs also without bias in the case where the input and output signals are contaminated by noise. This can be achieved by using periodic random and using time domain averaging instead of the frequency domain averaging proposed earlier in this video. This way it's possible to remove the noise in both vectors x and y. This does require longer averaging though, uh, but it's described in the book in sections 14.5.2 and 14.5.3. So if you're interested in this possibility, look in the book. This concludes the current lecture. Now you can go to the book and read the uh, relevant chapter and uh, work through the examples at the end of the uh, chapter. Then you should also go to the chapter examples in the Abravibe toolbox and read through these and run them and make sure that you understand all the steps involved. If you haven't yet downloaded the toolbox, you sh should do so at www.abravibe.com. Welcome back to the next lecture when you have worked through this.